Good morning. Welcome to your daily dose of God time. So glad you could join this morning as we look together at through the book of Romans. We're talking about the greatest news. We're still talking today about the inclusiveness of salvation. Romans 10, 12, for there's no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. With that message in mind, let me articulate two or three conclusive non-negotiable truths about that inclusiveness of salvation. Number one is this, ethnic and racial prejudice is blatant sin. It's as absolute sin to see oneself or one's ethnic group or race as being superior to people of other ethnic races or group. That's not woke, that's biblical. And I don't know how the Bible could possibly put it in any clearer language than it does in Romans 10, 12, for there's no distinction between Jew or Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all who call upon him. God sees people without distinction, without favoritism. And if we take a view of people that is different than that of God's, it's the wrong view and we are in sin. The second thing is this, the second takeaway, The church's ministry, worship, evangelism, and discipleship must be intentionally cross-cultural and cross-generational. There are no exclusions. We are responsible to preach the gospel to every ethnic group, to every people of every class, every race, every culture, every ethnicity. The Great Commission reads this way in Matthew 28, 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. That word nations there is the word ethne. Our word ethnic is derived from that Greek word. I think every church must take this great commission seriously, and it's our responsibility to reach out to every ethnic group we can possibly touch. This means our ministry and our evangelism must be intentionally cross-cultural and cross-generational. Just remember that if it hadn't been for some Jews like the Apostle Paul who were willing to cross cultural boundaries, none of us would be here today. We're all Gentiles. And if Paul had not embraced a cross-cultural ministry and become the apostle to the Gentiles, Christianity would be made up of only a small sect of Jews. And also remember, it cost Paul a high price to obey God in reaching out to Gentiles and embracing a cross-cultural ministry. And I'm discovering it still costs a group of people of high price to be intentionally cross-cultural and cross-generational. In our ministry, evangelism, and discipleship, there's still a lot of people who think that we should only do church the way they like it and the way that fits their culture or the way that it fits their generation. I believe the church must not only be intentionally cross-cultural, it must be intentionally cross-generational. It seems to me that young and old alike should be able to love one another and minister to one another in the church. It seems like the church is the one place where each generation should be willing to reach out and love people of other generations. And it seems to me that the church is the place where people should be the least selfish and the most willing to change and sacrifice so the generations to follow Uh, can embrace the gospel. It's not, but it should be. And and, and I'm even going to go so far as to say, whenever that happens, that's sin. The third thing, the church on earth should be a microcosm of the church in heaven. If the church in heaven is going to be filled with people redeemed by the blood of Christ and united in worship of Jesus out of every tribe, tongue, people, and nation, then the local church on earth should be a body of people blended by the blood of Jesus and united by the worship and the praise of Jesus Christ. And and, and it seems to me that the blood-bought church of Jesus Christ should be the one place on earth where people from every tribe, tongue, people, and nation can come together, live together, worship Jesus together in unity, love, and harmony without the demise of class or cultural contempt. Jesus said it this way, my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. In the Greek, pasen, toy, ethnason, all ethnicities. I, for one, believe Jesus meant exactly what he said. Therefore, at First Southern, we want to continue to sing, to pray, to minister, to worship, and preach in ways that help people from all ethnicities and all generations feel welcomed and able to participate. So, as we look at this, 
as we look at this, our takeaway today is, is that racial and ethnic prejudice is a sin, and the church's ministry, evangelism, discipleship, and worship must be intentionally cross-cultural and cross-generational, and the church on earth should be a microcosm of the church in heaven. I believe that's going to bring Jesus glory. Well, as we, uh, maybe maybe this devotion was a little bit more preachy than you like, but, but I'm just telling you, um, there's no room in the kingdom of God for the littleness of prejudice. Uh, it's going to be hard to get there from here, if that's who you are. Let me pray for you, Father, in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to drop our prejudices and instead, Father, embrace. Embrace the Lord Jesus Christ, and in embracing him, we embrace everybody who he loves. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the fact that you love us with an everlasting love. And because you've loved us with an everlasting love, we are grateful that you chose us when the people who the gospel was first delivered to never would have. Thanks for people like Paul and those trendsetters that brought the gospel to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you have a great weekend. Love God. Love one another. Now, go be salt and light.